I wanna tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is one of the world's largest real estate investment trusts. Real estate can be very lucrative. They're not making land anymore, and that means limited supply. If you can put up quality, cash generating properties on that limited land, you've got yourself some cash cows. Well, this company has built itself an empire of cash cows, and it returns most of that cash flow back to its shareholders via a large growing monthly dividend. I've personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I wanna share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Realty Income Corp which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Realty Income Corp, stock ticker O, is a real estate investment trust that leases freestanding single tenant triple net leased retail properties. Founded in 1969, it's now a $40 billion by market cap real estate giant that employs just under 400 people. The portfolio of over 13,000 properties is diversified across the US, Puerto Rico, Spain, Italy, and the UK. The company serves more than 1,300 clients operating across 85 different industries. The property portfolio has an occupancy rate of 99%. Approximately 83% of the properties are retail in nature, while the remainder is mostly industrial. No one tenant accounts for more than 4% of annualized contractual rent. Real estate can be really great. Part of the appeal is in the way supply is naturally constrained. Like the old saying about land goes, they're not making it anymore. Other than small reclamation projects, the usable land we have now is all we'll ever have. Commercial real estate one-ups this natural supply-demand favorability by erecting profitable properties on tracts of prized land. If one can build or buy a well-located property and then rent it out to a suitable tenant, that's a cash cow. Multiplying this formula over and over again to the point of amassing a large and diversified portfolio of cash cows is what realty income has turned itself into. But real estate can be, in some ways, not so great. It's difficult, expensive, and time-consuming to acquire real estate on your own. Becoming your own landlord involves scouting, lining up financing, studying comps, closing, leverage, finan finding tenants, managing properties, etc. And that's not even getting into how challenging and risky it is to scale this on your own. That's precisely where a real estate investment trust like Realty Income can enter the picture. When you buy shares in Realty Income, you instantly own a slice of a portfolio of thousands of commercial properties that already have paying tenants installed. You become a scaled up landlord on the spot without doing any of the heavy lifting yourself. No hassles from tenants about this or that because Realty Income handles it for you. What's great about Realty Income's business model is the nature of a commercial triple net lease. It's a lease agreement on a property in which the tenant agrees to pay all of the expenses of the property, including real estate taxes, building insurance, and maintenance. This significantly reduces Realty Income's overhead while also smoothing out results. Furthermore, Realty Income leases its properties to some of the most successful tenants a landlord could hope for. Realty Income's top 20 tenants include the likes of FedEx Corporation, stock ticker FDX, and Tractor Supply Co., stock ticker TSCO. The diversification across tenants, industries, and geographies, all while maintaining a high level of quality, sets Realty Income and its shareholders up for continued prosperity in real estate. That prosperity should translate into revenue, profit, and dividend growth for many years to come. Already, Realty Income has increased its dividend for 30 consecutive years with a 10-year dividend growth rate of 5.3%. That makes Realty Income a vaunted dividend aristocrat. More impressively, it's one of the only REITs in the world that is a dividend aristocrat. But the dividend growth story is even better than it seems as Realty Income tends to increase its dividend every quarter. In fact, the REIT has increased its dividend for 103 consecutive quarters. Coming at it from another angle, Realty Income has raised the dividend 121 times since its 1994 IPO. 
That level of consistency is incredible. And it's not just frequent dividend increases here, but also frequent dividend payments. That's because this dividend is paid monthly. It's like collecting a monthly quote unquote rent check without doing any of the heavy lifting. Realty Income takes this monthly dividend commitment to shareholders so seriously, it is trademarked its moniker, the monthly dividend company. These monthly dividends aren't small either. The stock yields 5.6% right now. That's 130 basis points higher than the stock's own five-year average yield. This heavy dividend is protected by a 76.9% payout ratio based on adjusted funds from operations per share guidance for the year. The payout ratio looks elevated at first glance, but this is a pretty common level for a REIT. Realty income's enduring commitment to paying a large dividend every month and increasing the size of that dividend every quarter is a sight to behold. For income-oriented dividend growth investors or even just investors who are looking to bolster the overall yield of their portfolios, these are compelling numbers. Looking at business growth, Realty Income moved its revenue from $780 million in fiscal year 2013 to $3.3 billion in fiscal year 2022. That's a compound annual growth rate of 17.4%. As great as this result is, it's somewhat misleading. REITs fund growth via debt and equity issuances. Furthermore, Realty Income recently merged with Verite, a competing REIT, which substantially increased revenue. With a REIT, you must look at profit growth on a per share basis. And when assessing profit for a REIT, it's important imperative to use funds from operations instead of normal earnings. FFO is a measure of cash generated by a REIT, which adds depreciation and amortization expenses back to earnings. Realty income grew its funds from operations per share from $2.41 to $4.04 over this 10-year period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 5.9%. This is the far more accurate indication of the true growth profile for realty income. To be quite frank, I think it's a great result. REITs are income vehicles and they're not expected to compound at sky-high rates. Despite natural limitations, including its structure and size, Realty Income still compounded its bottom line at about 6% annually. We can also see a pretty close relationship between bottom line growth and dividend growth, which further goes to show just how tightly this ship is run. Looking forward, CFRA currently has no headline prediction for Realty Income's FFO per share growth over the next three years. This is disappointing as I do like to compare the proven past up against a future forecast. However, because of how unusually consistent Realty Income has been, which extends over an unusually long period of time, I'd be inclined to assume a continuation of the status quo. That's my default setting in a situation like this. CFRA gives praise to Realty Income stating, and I quote, we see robust demand continuing for freestanding retail space driven by a favorable supply demand environment. We believe Realty Income is poised to outperform retail REIT peers in a more uncertain operating environment given its top tenants are concentrated in industries deemed essential such as convenience, drug, dollar, quick service restaurants, and grocery stores, unquote. CFRA also adds again, and I quote, we see revenue growth of approximately 18% to 20% in 2023, driven by significant acquisitions, realty incomes guiding for $7 billion, and regular rent increases. Occupancy remained strong in Q2, flat quarter over quarter at 99%, the highest occupancy level in 10 years, while realty incomes releasing recapture rate was a healthy 103.4%. We forecast occupancy will remain higher than its historical average of 98% throughout 2023 due to the company's desirable property locations and high non-discretionary retailer demand, unquote. If it's not clear by now, this is a top tier commercial real estate operation. However, the major challenge for continuation of the status quo in terms of growth on a per share basis is realty income's size. The larger this REIT gets, the harder it becomes for it to grow at rates similar to what it's enjoyed in the past. Most recently for Q2 fiscal year 2023, realty income reported 3.1% year over year growth in adjusted funds from operations per share. Is that the new growth profile? I think it's premature to say that it is, but it may be indicative of broader limitations of growth opportunities, and it may be why Realty Income's management recently decided to move outside of its core real estate type by diving into Las Vegas gaming with a 21.9% indirect interest in the, the Bellagio Las Vegas through a joint venture. I naturally lean toward giving Realty Income and its management team the benefit of the doubt. I don't think it's unreasonable to assume a mid-single digit growth rate from Realty Income in terms of both funds from operations per share and the dividend. If the growth slowdown persists for a number of quarters, into the future, it might then be time to lower the expectations. Some growth expectations have obviously already been lowered and priced in, seeing as how the yield on the stock has risen, partially through a decline in the stock's price. Said another way, the market seems to be adjusting the yield higher in order to compensate
compensate for the possibility of less growth in the future. Of course, there are other macroeconomic reasons for this, and competitive yields elsewhere, because of rising interest rates, are undoubtedly pressuring the stock. Either way you slice it, starting off with a higher yield than what's typically been available over the last several years does make it easier to potentially accept less dividend growth than what's typically been available over the last several years. If you can start off with a near 6% yield, even a lower than normal dividend growth rate of somewhere around 4% would get you pretty close to a 10% annualized total return, assuming a static valuation. That's lining you up for a market smashing yield and income growth that exceeds the now tamer inflation rate. Plus that big dividend is coming in monthly. Not bad at all. Moving over to the balance sheet, Realty Income has a solid financial position. The company has $49.7 billion in total assets against $20.8 billion in total liabilities. Realty Income's credit ratings are well into investment grade territory, A3 Moody's, A- S&P Global. Furthermore, many of the REIT's top tenants have their own investment grade credit ratings. Realty Income found a real estate recipe that works. The combination of triple net leases and a diversified roster of top tenants has led to one of the best long-term track records in all of commercial real estate. And with deep industry expertise, long-term contracts, and massive scale, the company does benefit from durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Litigation, regulation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Real estate demand is cyclical, and the financial financial health of realty incomes tenants could sour in a prolonged recession. A REIT's capital structure relies on external funding for growth, which exposes the company to volatile capital markets and interest rates. Higher interest rates can hurt the company twice over. Debt becomes more expensive and equity can also become more expensive because income sensitive investors have alternatives, which can reduce demand for and pricing on the stock. A recession can also hurt the company twice over. Demand for commercial real estate can cool and equity issuances after a drop in the stock's price would come at a higher cost. Any wholesale changes in physical retail could hamper long-term growth. The company's scale is an advantage, but it also introduces questions around growth and the law of large numbers. I see the risks as being worthy of contemplation. However, with the stock's price down 20% over the last year, the valuation is also very much worth contemplating. The stock is trading hands for a forward part price to funds from operations ratio of 13.8. That's based on FFO per share guidance for this year. We can look at that number as an analog to a PE ratio on a normal stock and it just goes to show how low the valuation is. We can also look at the cash flow multiple, which is another way to judge the valuation for a REIT. The price to cash flow ratio is currently 12.8. To put that into perspective, the five-year average cash flow multiple for realty income is 19.3 and the yield as noted earlier is significantly higher than its own recent historical average. I value shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 4.5%. I'm erring on the side of caution here, bringing down the expectations just a bit relative to what Realty Income has consistently delivered over the last decade. I do think it'll be difficult for the REIT to produce a 5% plus compound annual growth rate in FFO and the dividend over the next 10 plus years. Size and saturation will almost certainly work against the firm. In some ways, Realty Income is a victim of its own success. That said, a minor slowdown wouldn't be catastrophic at all, especially since the yield has already risen in order to meet that lower growth rate in the middle. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $58.33. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates O as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $76. CFRA rates O as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $66. I came out low on this one, but we all agree that some cheapness appears to be present. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $66.78, which would indicate the stock is possibly 18% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Realty Income Corp is a high quality REIT that has shown a rare level of endurance and consistency. Few companies take the commitment to shareholders more seriously than this one. With a market smashing yield, a mid single digit dividend growth rate, a reasonable payout ratio, 30 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the 
the potential that shares are 18% undervalued, this dividend aristocrat should be a strong investment candidate for long-term dividend growth investors who are looking for a sustainable yield. And now for a special news announcement, Albemarle Corporation stock ticker ALB has revised a proposal to acquire all outstanding shares of Liontown Resources, an Australian company with potentially valuable mines, including its Kathleen Valley mine. The revised offer is for $4.3 billion on an equity value basis. Good stuff. Albemarle is the only way for long-term dividend growth investors to get a dividend aristocrat with huge direct lithium exposure. Don't forget about it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high-quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.